Now that I've wrapped up a KVK against two of the strongest kingdoms in the game, that's 1093 and 1960, it's time to update my legendary investment tier list to showcase the very best commanders to use in the open field. This list is oriented towards free to play and low spend players, so let's get into it. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskel Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And now that I have seen and battled against some of the very strongest kingdoms in the game, I think it's fair to go in and update the legendary investment tier list, and also we can go in and include the new legendary commanders. Now if you're new to this format, I have been doing this I think for several years now, where I rank the commanders as follows. First and foremost, the top priority. If you work on nothing else, start there. And remember that in Rise of Kingdoms, new commanders come out pretty much once a year for each troop type, which means that you really want to focus on the best of the best, especially if you are free to play or low spend and you can only max so many commanders per year. So although it may be tempting to make lots of marches really quickly, my recommendation is to start with this top priority and new top priority commanders will show up over the course of a year and focus on the new ones that show up in this list. Then there is low priority, and the more you spend or the longer you've been playing, the more access you'll have to more things. And you might look at that second row and say, okay, now that I've done all the top priority stuff, what do I do in low priority? And between the two of these, I generally try to have only three commanders from each troop type. Why is that? Well, generally speaking, players should only field one or two marches of each troop type, which means you really don't want to be investing legendary commander sculptures into the fourth best commander of a troop type, because that's the first one to go when new commanders show up. So this list is oriented towards commander investment, commanders that I think will be valuable to you over a long period of time. Now this next row is before Season of Conquest only. These are the commanders that I think have value in maxing before you get to KVK Season 3 and Season 4. Then we've got Niche Roll. Like, if you really know what you're doing, you could go for one of these commanders. Not all of them are even field-oriented, but you could do it if you were, like, a specialist in a troop type or had a very specific thing you were trying to do. That Now, contrast that to the Just No category. The Just No category is where we put commanders that I don't think you should put a single sculpture into at this point in time. Now, people get confused and they think, wow, well, but this commander or that commander is still good, Chiskel. I'm not saying these commanders are all necessarily bad, although many are. What I'm saying is it's a bad time to start investing in them. That's what the just no category is. Lastly, there's the free category. These are things you get from gold keys and other sources anyways, and you'll you know max them over time, or maybe with minimal investment, you can go and max one of those out, all right? So, now we can drop in the new commanders. And what's really interesting to me is that players said, hey, I want less frequent releases of commanders. And what the developers, in my opinion, did instead is they kept the same frequency, but they changed one of the commander cycles each year to be something that is basically irrelevant to most people, okay? And most people are not working on engineering commanders, which we will put in the niche role category. So both of these new commanders would go here, and most people do not need a city garrison. <laughs> so they're all niche role. Like, if you play your account well, and you don't get into trouble, you don't really need a city garrison, and you might go for ranged if you wanted to, but the play style is so different from typical open field, like... Yes, you can do it, but there are so many hurdles that would stop you from doing this. One is equipment. The next would be that many kingdoms require you to delete your siege. And this list goes on and on, right? Then you need the armaments, et cetera, et cetera. So I think they go squarely in niche role. But the most exciting changes to this list come from my experience battling against 1960 and 1093, which is that, oh, and by the way, battling on my restart account, okay? I used on my main account Liu Cha with Sargon, and it did great for me. On my restart account, I used Liu Cha and Alexander the Great. And that also did shockingly well for me. So for the first time, in as long as I can remember, 
I am promoting up a commander from just no, and we're going to drop it into the before SOC only category. Alexander the Great is back on the menu, baby. Now, this is going to be really exciting for new players to the game. And I just think it's very intentional that the developers are releasing commanders that have the potential to revive early commanders in the game. And in my opinion, I've said this before, but that should be the developer's aspiration because although there is very, very obvious and you could argue very extreme power creep from the early game to the late game, so much so that obviously they added in the museum to say, hey, we have this extra building to give extra buffs to the commanders that don't hang in the end game. Alexander the Great is one of those commanders that has a buff and he hangs in the end game when paired with Liu Chen. Now, there are a number of reasons why that's the case. I covered that in a separate video. I actually was really dismissive of the idea that Alexander the Great would be as good as he is, but Omniarch called that shot first, so credit is uh, where credit is due. He made a video about it. I was kind of dismissive about like whether or not Alex could be good, and that was just based on my experience using Alex for like a couple years with Guan Yu, and it just like it's so damn squishy. But Liu Cha actually has enough tankiness and enough stuff going on that Alexander the Great is back. The instant proc damage combo is legit. Now, what does that mean for infantry on this list? Well, something kind of funky, right? You heard me say earlier, I only like to have four commanders of a troop type in low priority and top tier. And Alexander the Great is going in before SOC only. So what I'm trying to say is, don't go back for Alexander the Great. But do I think if you have him... You should use them. Yeah, I think you could do that. And I think if you are early in the game, especially if you are spending, you could work on him. And I think having something to work on before you get to the end game is really, really nice. That said, the power level on those top priority commanders is so high that still I will argue that if you can be patient enough, you will be much happier maxing out Zhuge Liang, Liu Che and Herman Prime. And it is important to remember that Alexander the Great is not the linchpin commander that makes Liu Che good. It's the other way around. <laughs> Liu Che is what's making Alexander the Great good. All right. So there are some restrictions there that have me a little anxious, but you could use him with Skippy as well. And he would be very strong. All right. So now we look to the top priority and, and we say, does anything here change? And I would say... No, it does not. There are no cavalry, in my opinion, that go into the top priority based on what I saw in this KVK. In fact, I might even say that between Herman Prime and Zuge Liang, maybe the Herman Prime is better or more important. The funny thing is that you want as many Herman Primes sending poisons onto the field as you possibly can. And by the way, if you're a new player to the game and you're like, why don't I have these commanders? That is squarely because many of these only become available in KVK Season 3 and beyond. That's Kingdom versus Kingdom. So I actually feel extremely good about the top priority row. I feel extremely good about the low priority row. Um, and I feel good now about before Season of Conquest. The next question is, what do we do with these niche role commanders? How does this change? And there are several things that actually, in my estimation, have changed. First and foremost, Takeda just like doesn't really get any use anymore. So Takeda actually ends up going into the just no category. Poor dude. Um, Attila Takeda has been an iconic duo. That said, the replacement these days seems to be to play a KVK that gives you an artifact. It lets you change one troop type to another. And you're going to use Attila and you're going to pair with Liu Chat. And that slaps, bro. It's very good. It's very good. That combo, I am extremely happy with. As we cruise through this list, do we have need for some of these other commanders that are here? I'm going to say that, gosh, even Pakal these days, like, I guess we could say he's got a niche role. I guess we can keep it. I mean, we're about to get new cavalry. If you wanted to make lots of cavalry marches, you could do X, Y, but like... I'm very tempted to just take XY and drop him in the just no category. I know that's a little aggressive, but like new cavalry are right around the corner, man. I think they're up next, and I think we're going to get a garrison and we're going to get a fielder. And we're not going to be talking about XY anymore. 
when that new fielder comes out. And the new Garrison even potentially could be so good in the field that we put him up in the niche role category. Now, I do think that Boudicca Prime, Sargon, Justinian, William, they do some pretty cool stuff. William is very low damage factor, but his fourth skill is so good that I think we keep him there for now. The other thing I'll say is that although Tadek Ibn Ziyad is a great rally commander, I mean, I guess we keep him. I guess we keep him in niche role. I'm just tempted to move him out. So at the end of the day, these niche role category commanders, like if you're looking here as a free-to-play low spender, you're probably doing something wrong, right? I, I just, I don't think that's where it's at. Um, there are no commanders in the just no category that I would bump up based off of the last KVK that I was in. There's really nothing here that is terribly exciting. I will point out that uh, Richard the First has some special roles. We've known this for a long time, by the way, that his slow is really cool. I have been in KVKs where an expertise Richard the First with his 50% slow, instant proc once every, what, like 10 seconds or so. You can use this to slow rallies and mess up people's timing when they multi-rally. We did this against 1846 when I was in 1075, and it was hilarious. Uh, very, very funny to just mess up rally timings. In my most recent KVK, I got 21st in the honor grind. That was, uh, well, is what it is. Sucks to suck. However, a part of what they did there is they followed me around with a double C Richard when they found my AOE barb farming marches, and they slowed me to oblivion. There were, at one point, multiple Richards slowing my march, which had to go home to my city because I got exiled because they were, you know, trying to help their kingdom mate beat me. Anyways, you should watch that video. It's kind of a funny story. In fact, Hart will be in the end screen for that one. So honestly, I think I really nailed this tier list when I made it back in December. Like so little has changed, even with the addition of new commanders, that you should consider subscribing. Because actually, for many months in a row, this has been the list. I didn't even update this video in January because I had nothing to say. I didn't update this video in, in uh, February because I had nothing new to say. And here we are in March, and I'm like, yeah, no, this list is still slapping. It's very good. So if you enjoyed the vid, throw a like on here, consider subscribing. Alexander the Great is back. He's doing work in a way that I didn't expect really wild. If you want to see the full video about Alexander the Great card in the end screen, if you want to see how I got imprisoned, exiled, and ultimately uh, knocked down to 21st place for honor at the end of KVK, that was a hell of a story. Card in the end screen for that one as well. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.